I don't know if this is good news though, for some persons, most especially to for Yabo Ojo, who is very keen to make sure Naramali pays for what he did to Mubad. And also some fans as well, some Nigerians. I do not know if it's a good news for you guys that Naramali and Samlari has been granted bail. So according to the news, as of today, they said, breaking news, Naramali and Samlari granted bail with three shorty, with 20 million naira each. They are to deposit their international passport and report at state CID every Tuesday. The magistrate warns that if anyone calls a number, it will be recorded and played in the open court. Okay, the magistrate doesn't want to be bright. <laughs> this is a really laughable <laughs> matter. So the the court granted uh, Naramali and Samlari Bello good and fine with three shorties, man, way more. Three shorties. 20 million naira each. And then she said, nobody should call her phone number. If anybody call her phone number, she will record it and present it in open court. Nobody should call her phone number indirectly talking to Samlari and Naramali. If you are released, do not call my number and try to swingle the justice system. And again, they have to submit their international passport and report to the state CID office every Tuesday, which is really, really good. There's no need to owe any of them. In fact, not only Naramali, the rest as well, even the North uh, Prime Boy and the, uh, and the Speeding, Abyss Speeding, all of them should be released. If they can release Naramali, they should also grant bail to the rest as well. If they can pay, they pay. If they cannot pay, they stay in uh, in police custody. They should also grant their bail as well. Twenty million naira, abba, abba, barrio. Twenty million naira, and they told us bail is free. Oh. The police always tell us bail is free. Okay. The question that I have always asked before: all those big, big numbers called in court over uh, some suspects that have that have not been convicted yet suspect that have not been convicted yet if they want to release them so that they can fight for the case all those numbers they pay all those money they pay in bail for their bail do the court refund the money after the old judgment and uh, maybe they they then did, uh, discover that the court grant that person not guilty do they return the money back to that person or the court will hold on to the money or whoever is holding on to the money i want to know guys i do not know will they return the money back to naramali or samlari the 20 million naira if the court later discovered that they are not guilty of any charges will they return that 20 million naira back to naramali just the way they most definitely will return their international passport and so many other stuff as well. Will they return, return the money back to them? Let me know, guys. Well, it's the justice system. And uh, Naramalia Samlari actually did the right thing, fight for their right. It's fundamental human right to fight for your right. If you feel that you have been the, you are that uh, the that the judgment on you, the judgment and people are castigating you and uh, you are not guilty. You have every right to fight for your right, and the road that Naramali and Samlari have taken it is the best way. Go to court and seek for your fundamental human rights. I think it's good. I really applaud it. It's good. So the Ramali Assemblary will be released. I do not know if they will continue doing their business or maybe the Ramali might host show very, very soon with Zinuliski and uh, some other Malian record stars. So if Naramali decide to host a show now, 
honestly, as Nigeria, as, as, as a Nigeria living in Lagos, will you attend? If Naramali decide to host a show, maybe next week or next few months, will you attend that show? Let me know, guys, if you attend. You'll be surprised. The number of fans that will turn up for Naramali, you'll be surprised. Not everybody hates Naramali, let's be honest. That's why I say we are looking for justice for mobile. We are not looking for justice for any other person. Because some people, if you allow them to judge, they will just buy Naramali without even judging. They will just buy Naramali because they feel like Naramali is guilty for just making life unbearable for Mobad. <laughs> now, guys, it's a lesson. If you have any issue with someone and that person come online to scream that they should hold you responsible if anything happened to him or her, learn. Make sure you go first to the police to report that person. Write a strong petition against that person for that person to come out and explain himself why he said they should hold you responsible if anything happened to him. If I sue that person to court for making such statement, if Naramali had taken steps to sue Mobad, then when Mobad said, if anything happened to me, who are normally responsible? Then all those issues won't even stain Naramali. Because uh, you know, nobody knows the future, nobody knows what will happen the next minute. But if God has showed him that this will be your future, I believe Naramali would have immediately sued Mobad as a then. Then let's talk about Jaruma. Jaruma may have officially gone mad. You know, Jaruma is currently in a psychiatry hospital there about, I think so, in Karo, Abuja. It was rumored that she's there in Karo, Abuja, Abuja. And not just only that, she's constantly asking for knacks. She wants to be knack. So she's constantly asking for knack. So I just feel like it's poetic justice because you are busy selling Kayamata and you went on to take your own dose. That is exactly what you will get. Constantly asking for knacks. But meanwhile, a video was published recently. Someone published a video and the person said, this was before Jaruma was admitted into that psychiatry hospital. Jaroma was busy shouting, Yay! No, I don't know what she was uh, saying because I do not understand mad people. You know, I cannot translate the word of a mad person or of a drug addict. I cannot translate it. But she was uh, quite misbehaving and acting irregular. So I think uh, she needed help. So her family member quickly speed up a lot of things to get her help speed up a lot of things to get her help and uh, she is currently in a psychiatry hospital that is what we know about i don't know if it's psychiatry hospital or a rehab a rehab or psychiatry hospital i do not know i, I don't know i don't know guys honestly but it's complicit the whole information is complicit so jaroma i cannot say i wish you all the best to all well you are a human being so if indeed anything is happening to you, as long as you're a human being, I wish you quick recovering. I wish you all the best. But if I should speak like uh, someone who have been ever affected by your Kayamata and uh, so many things that you, that you have ever sold to young ladies, honestly, I wouldn't want to wish you well, but you're a human being. And God say we should wish each other well. So I'm wishing Jaroma well and quick recovery. So let's move past that. I want to play you a video. I don't know if this woman is a pastor or a motivational speaker or anything of any such. But here is what she said. All of you will be carrying natural hair about. Who, who natural hair help? Okay. But I you better wear your wig. I'm doing like this. 
I'll be flipping it. Go and spend that money on hair. Spend, draw your brows. Buy lip gloss. Look good. Natural hair is not selling markets. When you marry, you off your wig. Hey, because you have entered. There's nothing they can do about it. But before you enter, don't be caught on fresh. Never. Package yourself well. Well, that woman that is preaching, of course, she also saw her pre-wedding pictures when she met her husband and old pictures. You can see how she wasn't even wearing any wig and everything. It is advisable for women to look fresh. That one a normal thing. Do not lose guard if you are if you are uh, married. Do not lose guard. Make sure you look fresh within within the content of being having being responsible, having respect for your marriage. Make sure you look fresh. Don't you? It's wrong with that. But our mode of preaching is wrong. It's wrong. You know in Nigeria, women depend solely on men. Majority of women depend solely on men. Majority of women depend on their boyfriend to provide their cream, their hair, their transportation, their house rent, their school fees. Their feeding money, their clothes money, their jewelry money, their perfume money, their phones, their laptop, their card, their vacation money, name it. They depend on their boyfriend for those things. So if you want a lady to see, to actually see her husband, is this the kind of advice you will be giving that woman? Let's be honest. Let's call it speed, speed. People do not want to see the truth anymore. When you say the truth, they will say, oh, you are, you are a cake man. You are a cave man. You do not know what you are saying. You don't know what you are that. You are too serious saying all those stuff. It's the truth now. It's absolutely the truth. You are deceiving women, deceiving our young ladies out there. Please. To all the responsible mothers out there, responsible parents. I say responsible parents, so I'm not talking to everybody. Who. Responsible parents out there, because not everybody is responsible. Responsible parents out there, please. Teach your kings and teach your queens, your daughters, how to behave and how to preach goodness into the world. How to preach goodness into the world. Because this tongue, eh? If you believe in Christ, if you believe in God, huh, this tongue hmm, will speak on every sin you committed, on every deceit you give to people, on every bad advice you give to people. This tongue will expose you. So, if you want to follow her, follow her. She's married now. She's, uh, she's a pastor, chopping church money and doing all those things. And you, meanwhile, you have not even seen a husband yet. Talk, talk, you have not even been able to keep a relationship for a week. And you will be listening to her. <laughs>